Content warning. Unmarked spoilers for Final Fantasy XIV Shadowbringers, as well as discussion of suicide. Viewer discretion is advised. What does it mean to be a hero? It's a term that has changed a lot through history. To the Greeks, there really was no difference between a hero and a villain. A hero was simply someone who did great things. Kratos, for example, is not that out of the ordinary for a Greek hero. Yeah. But what is a hero in the modern day? Well, a hero is someone of unwavering moral righteousness, who doesn't hesitate to do the right thing. He doesn't rely on others, and will defy society if he knows what he is doing is right. He is the strongest, he is the smartest, he is the most brave, his will is unbreakable, and only he can make the tough decisions. He will sacrifice of himself, body and soul, for a cause he believes in, even should others call him a fool even if it means sacrificing his life, because his cause is just, and no one else but he can take on this responsibility. And if that is what heroism means, <laughs> heroism is bullshit. This is a very self-centered philosophy, even when it's being self-sacrificing. It was a genuine struggle to say all that out loud and not make it sound toxic as hell. I don't know if I succeeded. This seems to be an issue at the core of Final Fantasy XIV Shadowbringers, and it seems to reach the same conclusion that I did. This is especially unusual for a heroic fantasy RPG which has spent the last six years building us up as this fabled hero of legend. But the land of Norvrant is not kind to heroes. We knew this already from the Warriors of Darkness, whose heroic deeds had actually doomed their world. How arrogant of us to assume that we alone can save this world when so, so many others have failed. One of our first encounters sets the stage for our downfall much later. Teslim is a woman who runs a sort of hospice for people who have been infected by the light. Part of her duty is euthanasia, easing the passing of those who are about to transform. She is about to perform this duty on a child. Unfortunately, he wanders away, drawn by the Sin Eaters. Teslim goes off searching for him. She finds him in the clutches of a powerful Sin Eater. And without hesitation, she leaps into action to save him, only to be struck from behind the very next second. The Sin Eater had no interest in the boy. It only used him to draw her away. She acted to save an innocent. She was strong enough to cleave off its wing with one stroke. She did not hesitate. She did not request our aid. And for that, she died horribly, only to rise again as a monster that we would face later. I believe it is no coincidence that the attack on Holminster Switch occurred very shortly thereafter. So countless innocents died as a result of Teslim's heroism. A rather bleak picture, but it is a cycle repeated again and again. Titania of the Fae fought a light warden their battle was so epic it split the mountain, and when they prevailed, they were transformed into a light warden themselves, only to be imprisoned by their own people. After saving the first from the flood of light, Manphelia allowed herself to become part of a cycle of reincarnation, being reborn countless times as blonde-haired, blue-eyed girls, always named Manphelia. Each Minfilia was born with the powers of the Oracle of Light. Each Minfilia was compelled to fight the Sin Eaters. And each Minfilia died horribly, often very young, making no appreciable difference in the world's slow slide to oblivion. While she might not have saved the world, Minfilia's continuous sacrifices did make an impact on one man. 
Ranjit. Back when Yulmor actually fought the Sin Eaters, before Vothri's reign, Ranjit was in charge of tracking down, training, and protecting the newest Minfilia wherever she was. He saw many cycles of reincarnation, many young girls who fought and died before their time. Each of their heroic sacrifices left a scar on his soul until he could stand it no longer. That's why he opposes us in the main story. To him, we're just trying to exploit her. We're trying to take her away from safety for our own ends. All he wishes is for her to live in safety and luxury, to give this one Minfilia a good life, something none of the others have had. In his mind, he's a hero. He is acting upon what's right. He's letting no one stand in his way. He's fighting the bad guys. He is basically Liam Neeson. I will find you. And I will kill you. It is said that every hero is a villain in someone else's story. Emmett Selch likewise believes what he is doing is right. He remembers this grand world before the fall, where people were gods. But he lost half his people to calamity. He lost another half in summoning Zodiac to stop the calamity. And another half still was sacrificed to repopulate the world with life. And then, given enough time to recover, he would once more sacrifice half of all life to resurrect those who had been lost. And when Heidelin came and split the shards, all he sees is a fallen, misshapen world with fractions of people wandering around. He makes the case that, in his mind, we're the villains for trying to stop him from fixing what was broken. He tries to impress upon us the grandeur of what was lost. And it's hard to not empathize with him because he believes what he's doing is right. He takes this burden on himself to repair a fallen world. How are we so different from him? Taking on ourselves the entire burden of saving the first. To Ranjit and Emmett Selch, we are the villains. We are wrong for opposing them because they know what is best. The hole in their logic is that other people's opinions don't matter. Ranjit would ignore Minfilia's own wishes, believing her to be brainwashed, rejecting her agency because he knows what is best, because he is righteous. Likewise with Emmett Selch, he presumes to speak for all the Amarutines, living and dead, sundered and whole, and yet fully half of the survivors opposed him. Opposed the will of the Thirteen, who would become the Asians. Heidelin only exists because of their sacrifice to preserve the rest of the world. But to Emmett Selch, they don't matter. They're traitors. They're not the ones he speaks for. They don't share his vision. And he alone is right. It's a warped, patriarchal version of heroism that allows you to ignore the will of the very people you would presume to protect. So sacrificing to stop them is the heroic option, right? But then, what is a heroic sacrifice but the ultimate imposition of one's will to the supposed benefit of another? It's strange to think, isn't it, that martyrdom could be a selfish act. But this tragedy plays out in the course of the game. Consider the Crystal Exarch. His entire plan involves sacrifice, not only his life, but his honor as well. To that end, he has conspired with Urian Jay to conceal the truth of his plan. Because he knows that if you knew, you would try to stop him. He thinks that by painting himself as the villain, no one will wish to save him. Of course it falls flat, both because of Emmett Selch's interference and because, well, no one bought it. Even in-universe, everyone was just like, no way, you can't be serious here, you're not trying to betray us. And the reason was, it was out of character. 
he has spent fully a century shepherding the Christarium. Although others look to him for guidance, he has rejected the notion of power. His life is clearly dedicated to the benefit of others. So many will be lost without him. But he was still willing to sacrifice himself because he was convinced it was the only way. On the flip side, we have the temporary sacrifice of Thancred. He tried to sacrifice himself to stop Ranjit, but his power wasn't enough, and he was going to die without fulfilling his goal. Every bit of framing here made it seem like this death was going to be genuine, but his friends refused to allow it. Yastola and Alphanod save his life, but that's really not what he wanted at the time, was it? At the time, he believed he needed to die. Rin, at the time known as Menphilia, was going to have to make a choice about her own identity and her very existence. Thancred wanted the old Menphilia back, and he knew that Rin would have to sacrifice her identity for that to happen. Knew that what he wanted was wrong. He believed that by sacrificing himself in battle, he would make it easier for her. What he didn't consider was that she loves him. Everyone loves him. Nobody wanted his death. Ultimately, his death would serve no purpose, just to absolve him of guilt. It would have been a very selfish sacrifice. We too intend to sacrifice ourselves, at first by merely taking on an impossible burden, and later by actually dying. Our entire goal here is to take on the sins of this world by defeating the Light Wardens and absorbing their essence. While at first we arrogantly assume this is a burden that we can bear, it isn't. We fail. We cannot carry this burden alone. And if we continue struggling, it'll just warp us into a monster, like so many other fallen heroes. Artbert tries to help us, but ultimately his aid just spurs us into action. Theoul offers an alternative, but we are committed to our course. We go to the Amaro trainer, intent to take one out to the middle of the ocean, to dive as deep as we can, to fight an enemy of unfathomable power alone, at the bottom of the ocean. This is not a battle that we can win, it's a battle we want to die trying. Perhaps in our death we can atone for our failure, perhaps we can spare others the monster we would become. But everyone shows up for us, everyone wants to tell us how much we mean to them. It's an odd thing seeing a hero being talked down from martyrdom. And after thinking about it a while, I started to see this as what it was. A suicide attempt. As a wise man once said, the only difference between martyrdom and suicide is press coverage. So why did we not turn to others for help? Why did we assume that the only way out was sacrifice. The motives vary. For the Crystal Exarch, it was because no one else should have to bear this burden. For Thancred, it was to give someone else a better life without his presumably toxic presence. For us, it's to atone for our failure and to make one last positive contribution to the world. But there are still so many more battles to fight, so much more we can give this world. Same with Thancred. Same with the Exarch. We believe that we have to do this ourselves, when maybe there's another way. If heroism is just hubris, if sacrifice is just suicide, and if a hero can genuinely be the villain, depending on perspective, what's the alternative? And I feel like that is a central question to Final Fantasy XIV Shadowbringers. If our current view of heroism is so deeply flawed, then how can we redefine it? I decided to make this video a two-parter. The second part will focus more on the reconstruction of the heroic narrative and how Final Fantasy XIV presents a more 
collective alternative. In the meantime, keep a watch out for other things. Coming down the pipeline. I'd like to thank my patrons, Dax, Omega1313, Jade Hammonds, Terenza, and Steven. I'm actually thinking about shutting down my Patreon and going to Kofi. Uh, that's supposed to work better for a smaller creator like me. So tell me in the comments of what you think. And don't forget to make like a werewolf and like and subscribe.